Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Red and White Show. Joining me for this one to look at to this weekend's game against Crawley Town, Rovers winger Kyle Hurst and Club Doncaster media manager Liam Hoden. Hursty, first of all, welcome to the show. It's been a good few weeks now since you joined Rovers. How have you found it in general? Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, nah, it's been uh, really good since pre-season. It's been really good uh, for me. I've really enjoyed it a lot and uh, I'm looking forward to kick on. You managed to get a couple of goals under your belt. Mm. We'll come to the most recent very mm. shortly. Did that help settle you down, especially the two against Salford? You look at the first one, was voted goal of the month mm. in August. Then you take the second one like a man full of confidence. Did that help you settle down? Yeah, definitely. It was a massive confidence boost for me, uh, especially. But yeah, it did. It just it, it, it settled me down. It, um, I didn't get too ahead of myself after the two goals. The lads uh, brought me back down to earth. But uh, no, nah, it helped me settle and gave me a lot of confidence. Were you expecting to, to maybe start as much as you are? Because you, you came in, obviously, not really used to men's football as such. Then you're thrown straight into it at Bradford. But then your performance has merited being in the team each week. Did you just have to sort of take it in your stride as it came along? Yeah, definitely take it in my stride. I mean, I wasn't expecting uh, anything. Like, I know, I know uh, my back, like, from where I haven't played any first team, like you say, before I joined uh, Doncaster. But um, no, yeah, I'm just taking my stride and I'm very grateful for people around me. Liam, Kyle was one of a number of players brought in in the summer. He's been one that's played consistently as well. You look at James Maxwell behind you on the left and you've got players all around the team that have really complemented a, a good initial start to the season. Of course, it's been a little bit rocky recently, but that initial start was, was very positive. Yeah, it's good to see players coming in like Kyle and, and, and hitting the ground running, you know, with plenty of confidence and uh, Feeling that uh, embracing that pressure that is on this season to, to succeed, you know, Rovers very much expected to be right up there in uh, in League Two this season, and that can overawe some people. It's not overall these lads, and, and like I said, Kyle making a real big impact uh, so far. And we've we touched on before about the type of signing Rovers were making in the summer. A young player like Kyle who's hungry, wants to kick on, uh, that's exactly the type of player you need to be ringing into a, a football club like this. You certainly do. When, and when you're at this level, you can take advantage of the fact that players might not have had opportunities higher up, you know, and, but they've got that quality. They've got that quality to have been at a club like Birmingham, like Kyle has for, for such a long time. Not got that opportunity, come here and really show what they're capable of doing and that, that only, can only help Rovers. I know Adam Clayton played a big part in, in helping you in the summer. You, you came here on trial at first. Just paint the picture for anyone who might not be aware of that, just how much he did and l lend a helping hand throughout the, the summer. Massive amounts of help uh, from Clates. When I, came, when I uh, first got the call from the gaffer, knowing that I was coming up here for the trial, uh, Clates had already messaged me uh, before that. And uh, he got, when I came down, he gave, he, he, well, he, yeah, he let me live with him for a week, which I was very grateful for. It helped me a lot. Going to a new club, first time that I've ever mainly been to a new club um, in a long, long time. So it was a massive, it was massive help for me, and I'm grateful for him and his family for letting me uh, stay there. Did he have you doing the dishes or anything like that? Was that? Nah. <laughs> was it easy? To be fair, he didn't. Um, he didn't. To be fair, I just stayed down. You know, <laughs> just chilled with him. Really, it was. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Now, it was a much-needed return to winning ways for Rovers on Tuesday night against Lincoln City. You might have already seen the highlights. Here's an alternative angle from the win at the LNAR Stadium.
Kyle, as impacts off the bench go, that on Tuesday night for you must have been right up there. Was that, do you think, perhaps one of your most or best performances in a Rovers shirt, given it was only in a short time frame? Um, I think it was definitely up there, yeah. Uh, the impact I felt I had on the game and to help the team. And I think my goal helped the team with confidence because the last 30, 35 minutes we were on top of them. We were playing really well and we got what we deserve, the second goal. Um, away from home against a, de a good side good league one side um, so yeah it, it, it was good it was good yeah what was the message from the manager going on at half time because in that first half it had been a what you probably describe as a typical Papa John's tie hmm. hadn't it no, no real intensity to the game both teams were maybe a little bit lacklustre given the amount of changes but the second half certainly was taken up a gear um, yeah nah uh, I think when, when I was coming on um, the gaffer just said to me come on do what you do just make an impact um, and help the team and I, felt, and I felt like I did that and it, and it was good it was a, a great performance on the team even in the first half mm. stayed disciplined structured our structure was really good and we just continued that through to the second half and we got what we deserve I felt When the goal came was there ever any doubt that you were hitting it as soon as it landed at your feet? Yeah you know I saw it I saw it come out I like being at about around the edge I saw it come out and I thought you know what I'm just going to hit this hit it low and hard and uh, it paid off Liam it was a good response to going behind wasn't it you sort of had that air of inevitability when Lincoln went ahead is it going to be another defeat that would have been four in a row in all competitions and you know it is only the Papa John's trophy people might throw that at Rovers but to get that winning feeling back in the group you sensed afterwards it was a massive sort of turning point in the, the last few weeks definitely you know the, you need that lift wherever it comes from it can carry forward. I think there were so many positives to come out of it. Obviously, the players returning from injury, but all the players that have not had as much game time coming in and performing well. I think it just lifts everybody. It puts a little bit of pressure on those that have been playing in, in the league as well, which can only be a good thing. And I, yeah, I think it were a much needed win. And however that comes, you, you take it. Yeah, that character on show to to come from behind because I think Gary mentioned in the first Papa John's game there weren't really and probably against Lincoln in the Carabao Cup as well there wasn't really any players who'd come in and, and grab the shirt by the scruff of the neck you certainly couldn't throw that at Rovers on Tuesday No it was great and you know players coming back from injury they show they want to be straight back in you know with the, as soon as they're available to start games they want to be right up there and some of the performances really good Ben Close after so long out really really good performance in that really, very disciplined first half as well so yeah really good positives to come out of that game In the group as a whole Hursty, that puts Rovers within a point really of, of qualifying which with Wembley as a carrot at the end of it there isn't any more motivation than that Yeah there's not at all um, and like Liam said it was a great it was a great you could, yeah you could say it's only Papa John's but it was a great feeling for the boys just to get that confidence back going into this week's game Saturday it's massive but yeah like who don't want to play at Wembley you know what I mean it's a massive opportunity for, for all the players and the club so of course we don't take any game like we're going to do our best and uh, yeah Time to hear from another Kyle now then as Kyle Noyle takes part in the latest quickfire round Kyle Noyle 25 uh, born in um, London East London I uh, played for Junior Hammers, uh, Sunday League side. Chelsea, Chelsea my favourite team. Uh, favourite footballer I'd say, Frank Lampard, Chelsea centre mid. 
Uh, now I'd say Cristiano Ronaldo, um, what he's done throughout his career um, and just his hard work, dedication and everything that he's achieved. <laughs> I mean, there's not many to choose from, but uh, I'd probably say it was for Cambridge, it was against Crawley, it was outside the box, the ball just dropped to me and I just stuck in the top corner. Uh, I've made many uh, friends across football, so it's hard to choose from. <laughs> Good question, that. I'm just going to go safe, I'll go Nando's. <laughs> Probably just the Mackies, really. It's just Mackies, KFC, just anything that... Uh, quick and easy, yeah. <laughs> I've really got a fear like that. I mean, no one likes heights, do they? I'll probably say, yeah, heights. Non-footballing talent. <laughs> um, Non-footballing talent. Put me on the spot here. Football's the main talent, really. Um, can't think of much. <laughs> Favourite sport I'm in football? I like tennis. I do like tennis. I like the Wimbledon over the summer. Uh, watching a lot of Apple TV at the minute and they've got what's called Servant. It's a bit of a weird one. Have you heard of it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, watching that in a minute. And uh, House of the Dragon also, which is pretty good. I'm, I listen to anything really. A uh, bit of like hip hop, R and B, bit of house, whatever floats my boat. Really. Watch Prey. Uh, it's like Alien vs Predator. Watched that the other day, and I watched Top, Top Gun as well. That was a really good one. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Who'd play a movie in my life? Who'd I want to play? Trying to think of an actor of similar, who looks similar. It's not easy. Who's an actor that I can think of? Everyone just says like Denzel or like Brad Pitt, <laughs> but none of them look like me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Last holiday was to Mallorca. Yeah. I've always been interested in like, been interested in psychology a bit, so maybe down that route, or in like law. I know it's like difficult, but like maybe being a lawyer and just that side of things, just something, I don't know, sounds quite intelligent. <laughs> Other than for just video games really, just like Modern Warfare, FIFA, just love playing video games all day really, a bit of Fortnite. It would probably be just being like invincible, being like immortal, I guess. Probably Tomo's um, instinct. You know, the way he plays off the cuff and his skill, and he's like, he, he plays the game at his own tempo, if that makes sense. So he, he sees things other people don't. I'd say that, yeah. Firstly, you feature quite regularly on the, uh, the quick fires this season. A lot of players saying that if they could have anyone's attribute in the dressing room, it'd be your low centre of gravity. How pleasing is that to it, be a regular feature? Yeah, no, it is. It's, 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 I, was, I was surprised because uh, me only being, like, not new to the team, but a new signing, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was buzzing. It was a great feeling. I was like, yeah, cheers, lads. <laughs> we have mentioned that we, at the end of them as well, Liam, that... When it's come to it, yeah, you're not the first person to, to mention Kyle Hurst. And it, it shows how quickly he's been able to sort of adapt to the team and show what he's capable of. Certainly no nerves after coming in on trial. Certainly not. Certainly not. And that was, the, I think, the first one that we did uh, quite early on in the season. That was the answer that came up. And as we say, it's re repeated several times, along with Cristiano Ronaldo being the player that most of them uh, admire who's <laughs> playing now as well. So not bad company for Kyle. And Noyle also said that if he wasn't to be a footballer, it'd be a lawyer or a psychologist, which shows a lot of brains behind this squad as well at the, at the moment. Yeah, it's good insight that, to see what, what people, what kind of the interests that they've got and, uh, mm. and what they might have thought about doing in a different way. But that, yeah, that were, I think that was the, certainly the highest brow one that we've had so far <laughs> on, uh, as an answer. Of course, you'll have played in front of Noyley a little bit when you, either you've gone on the, the right-hand side and, and as a full-back, he loves to get forward, doesn't mm. he? What's that like as a winger nowadays? Because, of course, you don't want to get in each other's way, do you? Yeah. So it, 
you have to sort of be on each other's wavelength, don't you? Know when he's going to go on the outside or when he might want you to on the, on yeah. the overlap. I mean, that's the good thing about a fullback like Noily, Maxwell, going forward because they will give you that option to just draw the defender and play wide. Um, but then they give you the licence to go yourself if you're that type of winger. But um, it, it's good. I think it's good. I think it helps a lot. Um, definitely. And it's all a, a lot of it's communication. And like you say, being on the same way, being on the same wavelength is uh, massive and key to that. Aidan Barlow was one of three Rovers players to return from injury in midweek. He says it's been a great feeling to be back amongst the lads after recovering from a hamstring problem. Aidan returned to action on Tuesday after I imagine what feels like a lifetime without being on the pitch. How was that for you? Yeah, it was. It was just like. Um nice for me you know to finally get back out on the pitch and play a game because obviously I had quite a few setbacks one after another which has obviously been very difficult for me and um, yeah like I said I came back after my first injury and got injured again and I came back after my second and had a bit of a niggle and I had to step out of training for quite a bit so obviously to get the game in my legs it's obviously a very good positive for myself and to come through it without any niggles or anything, obviously, a bonus as well. So, yeah, it's all good. How frustrating was it? Because I know, was it an ankle injury at the start of pre-season, wasn't it? And you come back and did your hamstring, and as you said there, then yeah. you get little setbacks along the way. What was that like? Because obviously you signed your new deal, you're ready to go, and then you sort of held back immediately. Yeah. No, it was hard, to be fair. It was very hard, um, especially coming back, obviously, buzzing, excited, obviously worked hard, put a lot into the off-season you know, to to have a big season this season and then to come back and have setback after setback. But I think you have to take it in some sort of positive in a way and um, make it try and benefit you in the long run, which I'm I'm going to. Hmm. There seems to have been a bit more structure in terms of the way the lads are, are coming back from injury now. You often see whether it's running around the, the pitch doing laps when the other lads are in training. Did that make you feel a little bit closer to it as you were getting closer to, to coming back itself? Yeah, every time I, I was able to go out there on the grass, even when the lads were training, was just was nice for me because obviously it's not very very good being stuck inside the gym or in the physio room while the lads are out training and stuff and you can hear them laughing and enjoying training. It's difficult. Um, but yeah, every opportunity I got outside to be to get closer to, to, to the group and to, to watch a bit of training. And obviously now I'm back involved with all that now, so it's, it's good. How important was it not to to rush back too soon as well and make sure that Tuesday night's game was was the right one for you? I assume it would have been easy to to push it and maybe try for last weekend or maybe the weekend before, but knowing that you were ready to go on Tuesday must have been very comforting as well. Yeah, it was better as well for my for my mind, for my mental state as well. Obviously, knowing I've had um, injury after injury after, do you know what I mean? And then... Um, just, just knowing I was ready was good for me and then getting through it as well was obviously great as well. How did you keep yourself mentally strong throughout the setbacks? Because I, I know you joined in the treatment room by the likes of Ben Close, who's, who's obviously had setbacks himself. Did you sort of lean on his experience with his injuries and sort of maybe get a bit of advice from, from him or any of the other lads? Uh, yeah, to be fair, we all we was all helping each other at the time. Like um, There was Tom in there at the time, Tails were in there, Close, uh, Rio... Ollie, we was there's a few of us in there at the time to be fair. Um and yeah, we were all just helping each other through of it, just putting in the work every day and you come out the other side better anyway, so it's all worth it. What was it like on Tuesday then? You, you, I suppose there's only so much training you can do, isn't there? What was it when you first get that first touch of the ball, maybe first crunching challenge from the defender who's marking you? Was yeah. that well well and truly back? Yeah, yeah, it was it was a bit of a weird one at first. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was one of them games which it wasn't too difficult fitness wise because they had a lot of possession to be fair and we were just being disciplined in our shape and stuff which is obviously good as well because you get a different type of game um, so yeah I think the game had every aspect really like recovery runs counter-attacking runs sitting in a block and stuff like that so I think it was good in terms of that as well mm. Of course, you're one of a few lads who've come back into the squad recently. We're on a difficult run of form in the league at the minute, but how much can that win in the Papa John's help just turn things a little bit? It's got that winning feeling back in the dressing room as well. Yeah, um, yeah. obviously we went through um, that little free little spell of losing, but 
Yeah, I think any win, no matter what cup, whatever, any win can gain momentum. And I think obviously we, we won Tuesday, which was a good win against a good side. Um, so yeah, that can only put us back in momentum and give us more confidence going into Saturday as well. There's a lot of competition in the sort of area you tend to pop up in as well, isn't there? Sort of wide right or wide left position. And when you've got games coming Saturday, Tuesday for the next few weeks, it helps the manager, doesn't it? Knowing that he can take somebody out, put whether it's you or whether it's Tails, Hursty, Luke Mullen, you in, depending on the opposition, he's got those options available to him. Yeah, I think now, obviously, most people are back from injury now. Obviously, there's still a few still a few in the physio room but I think we've got a very very strong squad um, we've got numbers in every position and competition in every position but also every position it's, it's quality um, every player's got quality you know what I mean and that's the main thing everyone brings something to the table and yeah like you said the manager will have a headache Liam as I said there AD one of three players Ben Close in there Joseph Olu as well and, and to have those players back available to the manager can only benefit the squad, can't it? You're looking at it coming up to a couple of weeks where it's Saturday, Tuesday in League and Cup, you're going to need everybody available. Yeah, you've got three players in completely different positions, all adding something to the squad. And we've seen really what, what they all can contribute. It's a big, big season for, for Eddie Barlow, looking to kick on from those sort of first steps into senior football last season. And uh, I thought he did well when he got on the ball. We were very eager to get on the ball the other night and, and we can see... There's sort of plenty for him going forward and a, a great option to, to have uh, for, for Gary McSheffrey. Hursty, how much can that help drive the rest of the squad knowing that players are, are back in competing for shirts? You know, Ben Close in midfield, you've got Aidy Barlow who's a natural attacking player whether that's on the wing. You know, you, you and Luke are now thinking, oh, I've got to play well or you, know, you can take my place. It, it's got to bring the best out of everybody, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And it, it's good to have the, all the boys back, the squad getting back together. It's a great feeling. Training's very good. So it's good to have that. But yeah, you're right, like there is there's pressure on shirts, but that that's only a good thing for all players. Like it just makes you want to do uh it makes you want to play well, well more well, well every game. So uh yeah, it's good. Crawley the next test then, down here, of course the last couple of home games haven't gone the way we would have liked. A defeat against Swindon, of course, losing against uh, Mansfield at the start of the uh, the month as well. How important is it that we see a, a reaction in league terms this weekend? Massive, it's massive. Uh it's massive to see a reaction this weekend. Yeah, we need it back at that, and we're off the back of a good win as well. Um, so this weekend is going to be massive for us. But I feel like you know we've got the confidence. We're, we're in a good place. We know what we can do, and we're, we'll have a reaction. Did the boys come in on Thursday with a bit more spring in their step? You feel a little bit of an uplift in the camp? Yeah, definitely. Uh, training was very good today. Um, yeah, the boys are they're, they're, they're happy. The boys we're, we're all happy. You know, we're on the same wavelength. We know what we've got to do as a team and together, um, so uh, it, yeah, it'll be a good reaction for Saturday. Liam Crawley, 20th in the league at present, despite investing heavily in the summer, they've not really had the start have they, that they or, or many others on the outside would have expected. No, definitely not, they've, they've made no secret, the ambition, the, the new owners, raised a few eyebrows with the way they've gone about things and, and also signing like Dom Telford as well, people expecting him to, to go higher up the, uh, the food chain and he's found himself uh, at Crawl and they'll be expecting big things from him. It's a slow start. They've had an awful lot of change, so is it teething problems? But have, have they yet to get going? We'll, we'll wait and see. Hopefully, Rovers can take care of business on Saturday and uh, continue their, their slow start. You mentioned Dom Telford there, top scorer in the division last season with Newport, and, and many did expect him to, to move on to a higher level, but it, it's uh, I suppose that he was the statement signing for Crawley, wasn't he, to, to let people know they were serious this season? That's it. You know, I think it says everything about what they're doing. You know, clubs from the outside looking and thinking that we, they'll probably everybody across League Two will have an idea of what Crawley will be paying. You know, and, and that that's that statement of their intention. They talked about Championship football, which for a club the size of Crawley would be absolutely massive. They've got big ambition. Uh, they've just got to get uh, get off the ground. Let's see how big would a win be this weekend. Then you've got the one in the cup. If you can then bounce it with three points in the league, it just sets you on the right, right track, doesn't it, nicely? It does, yeah. Um, it'll be massive to the win Saturday and it just shows uh, what it's leading to consistency and that's what we need at the moment and I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get that and hopefully it starts from, we start Tuesday, it starts from Saturday in the league and we carry on and uh, carry on playing how we're playing, how we've been playing from Tuesday. I won't put you under pressure in giving us a score prediction, but Liam, how do you see this one going? 
I'm going to bring out an old favourite for this one, 2-1. Uh, Hey Steve, Liam, thank you for your company. Thank you at home for watching on as well. That's all we've time for on the latest episode of the Red and White Show. We'll see you down here at the Eco Power on Saturday. A chance for Overs to get back to winning ways in the league as they take on Crawley Town.